So every year at WWDC, Apple usually releases a bunch of new features and even a new OS. But this year, something that really caught my eye was Apple's private relay. What exactly is it? Well, as some people call it, it's Apple's new VPN. So what's exciting about Apple's new VPN? Is it any different from the ones that we normally use, like say SmartDNS Proxy? Well, that's what we're here to find out. I'm Vamdi from SmartDNS Proxy, and in this video, I'll see what the comparisons are between a regular VPN and Apple's new private relay, which is just basically Apple's VPN. Let's get to it, shall we? So both services mask your IP address and hide it from trackers and internet service providers. For example, on the left, I've got my iPhone running iOS 15 with private relay enabled. And on the right side, I've got a regular smartphone that runs STP's VPN. Throughout the video, I'll use them to show you the difference. So whenever you search for, you know, what's my IP address on Google, with and without VPN turned on, as you can see, you'll be greeted with a different IP address. And not just that, both Private Relay and VPN hide your exact location from trackers. Another similarity between these two services is that they can unblock websites that are restricted by your internet service provider. For example, it's common knowledge that a VPN helps you unblock websites that are blocked by your ISP or your government. So I won't talk a lot about that, however, on this iPhone running iOS 15, I was surprised to see the adult websites such as Playboy.com, which is blocked in the Indian government, was easily accessible with Apple's private relay. Although this could change in the future with the public release of iOS 15. So far, you know, the VPN and private relay look kind of similar. So you might be thinking, let's just, you know, let go of the old one and just use Apple's VPN because it's native and whatnot. But before we do that, let's just actually take a deeper look and see what the actual difference is between a traditional VPN and Apple's new private relay, basically a VPN. So one of the biggest differences you probably would notice right away is that Apple's private relay only works on Safari's browser. All right, this way, Apple is trying to give users an incentive to switch to Safari instead of Google or Chrome, you know? Whereas a traditional VPN works on all browsers and apps and even devices. So if you're using Chrome, Firefox or even a desktop or a smart TV, a VPN is still your only option. So another major difference in both of these services is in its, you know, jurisdictions and how you can unblock it. So Private Relay masks your location but still keeps it within the country. For example, when I search what's my location on Google with Private Relay turned on, it showed my location as Delhi, India, but if I search the same thing on Google Chrome, it shows my actual location that's Noida, India. There's no option to change my location to another country of my choice. So therefore, with Private Relay, I can't really access Netflix US or BBC UK or, you know, Amazon Prime from US or even HBO Max for that matter. Similarly, I can switch to any US server to get access to Netflix US catalog. Although, you'll most likely need a paid VPN to unblock due restrictions. So another popular belief is Apple's private relay will be free, right? No, no, it's not expensive as a regular VPN, but it's not for free. For example, if you're already paying for iCloud storage, which starts as little as a dollar, the private relay feature along with many other privacy options are already added at no extra cost. Most VPNs cost a separate subscription which usually starts around you know, $3 to $5 a month although you get a free VPN as well but those are either not reliable or secure even and offer limited bandwidth. We highly recommend that you use a paid VPN like SmartDNS Proxy. So in an interview with Fast Company, Apple's software chief, Craig Federighi, talked about the issues that are most common with VPN services. With a traditional VPN, users' internet traffic is encrypted and the ISP doesn't actually know what site you're using or your actual IP address. But with a VPN provider itself, you know the real IP and the websites you're visiting. And the problem is, you can never be sure of what VPN is doing with your browser data. So iCloud Private Relay, on the other hand, uses a dual hop architecture, encrypting it before and after it leaves your device. In simple words, not even Apple knows where you're headed on the internet. Yeah. 
Another minor difference is actually the availability of Private Relay in other countries, unlike you know other VPNs which are country-based. So Apple's new encrypted browsing feature won't be available in China, Saudi Arabia, Belarus, Colombia, Egypt, Kazakhstan, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, Turkmenistan, Uganda, and the Philippines. So if you're living or you know planning to visit there, there in any time in the future, VPN is your only choice. That said, only a few VPNs that are registered with Chinese government are officially allowed to work in China. So if you're planning to visit China, it's advisable that you do your thorough research because we all know how that goes with the CCP. Another difference between both of these services is that Apple's private relay always stays on and encrypts all of your browsing data from your browser and you don't have to manually turn it on or turn it off like a regular VPN. Well, there are some similarities between Apple's private relay and a regular VPN like say, you know, IP masking because you have to do that if you want to encrypt your data. So Apple is really good at privacy and security, but a regular VPN on the other hand is really good for unblocking geo restrictions and accessing different servers. So if you don't want to be restricted to Safari browser alone, a regular VPN or a private VPN is the best thing that you can find.